Scratch led the party down the trail, tracking the creature that attacked him, while the others followed in various states of concern. In the distance, they spied a large fire that cast an eerie glow in the fog of the swamp. Moving silently, the champions and Petunia came across a small, primitive village at the base of a hill, where four humanoid figures could be seen lashed before a knoll shaman who was preparing for some form of sacrificial rite. As the ritual reached its climax, the party made their move, attacking the shaman and cleaving their way through the knoll warriors. Wading through combat in a desperate rescue attempt, the champions and Petunia scattered the knoll villagers and cut down their warriors. Upon seeing her people fall, the shaman summoned hellish hyenas and attempted to flee. Did we see Wishing Misty Step 2? Um, go ahead and make a perception check, but you're too far away to really see unless she's coming towards you, and she knows where the arrows are coming from, so she's not coming towards you. So, then I don't make a perception check. Yeah, I was going to say, you wouldn't see where she went. Wait. And I think Misty Step only takes you, what, like 30 feet? Yeah, so she kind of pops, and then she'll use her move. Okay. So the furthest she can be is 60 feet away, but still, it's a matter of where. Which, on your turn, Scratch, you'll be allowed to hunt her down. And then that was her. The direwolves get to go, and the direwolves now have friends. Do have friends. Uh, they don't. They don't know exactly where she went. Nah, she just vanished in front of them. All right. But they have two gnolls and two hyenas which are technically fiendish hyenas, so they're not just regular hyenas. I guess I should go for the fiendish hyenas, huh? That would be a good use of them. Yeah. All right, so Fang will go for... They're going to team up on one, try to take one down. Ah, the typical wolf technique. Is what they do. You, you mean focus fire? Crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also advantage, you know? Um... <laughs> Always helps <laughs> to have advantage. Uh, 18 plus 5 to hit. 18 plus 5. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that will... <laughs> so Fang will sink his fangs into one for a total of... That's really nice. 12 points of damage. Ooh. So, 12 points to Abbott. Is the other oh one Costello? Oh my god. The other one's Costello. Get, go home. Go home, Brian. <laughs> do, you, do you know why? Because they laugh a lot? Because they're hyenas? No. No, no, no. Well, that's probably why they were named that, but this is actually a nod. In Batman the Animated Series, Harley Quinn's hyenas are named Bud and Lou mm. as a nod to Abbott uh, and Costello. Oh. So I'm... A nod of, to a nod. A nod to a nod, yes. Go home, Brian. You're drunk. All right. So so then Fury will go after Abbott. Oh. Oh, sweetie. He crit failed, didn't he? Two natural ones, in fact. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Roll again, see if he hits Fang. He does. <laughs> oh, sweetie, sweetheart, why? And as, as he bites into his ally, you just hear the two fiendish hyenas start cackling with oh. this. It's it's laughter. It's the hyena laughter. Yeah. But it's... <laughs> And he it's did the that, same but it's amount. deep and demonic sound. And he did the same amount of damage. He got a five and a four on the die. Plus oof, the... oof. Honey. And, <laughs> and the height. Abbott and Costello are laughing their asses off right now. Oh, sweetie. <laughs> okay, that's 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 their turn. They moved to engage a, a hyena and drew blood. They both drew blood. They both technically drew blood. Uh, group one will go. Uh, one is going to move in on you, Scratch, because technically two is going to move in on you because you've just killed one. He crits. Alright, so number two moved in and crits on you, Scratch. Oh, and for max damage. Um, so that is... I'm looking it up. 18 points of piercing damage. Whoa. Well, I mean, when you crit max, when you crit max, that's, that's kind of what happened. Yeah. How is he attacking me? With a spear. He just kind of moves in and... Because you you were the guy next... You just killed his buddy. He was. This is the other guard. He just moves in and stabs you with that spear. Uh, and then the other two are going to move in 
thing is they're coming... One actually doesn't get an attack this turn because he's coming up from the opposite side of the hill. He has to move his... He has to double move. The other one can come around and actually get Petunia. Bring it. So that is probably not going to hit with a 12. Nope. All right, so group one has gone. Petunia, you are up and you have two gnolls on you. Oh. Were any of them hit? I don't think so. No. Okay, well, let's pick... Um... Give me, d dis uh, describe them to me. Um, slavering, hyena looking, carrying spears and trying to stab you. I don't know, does one of them look like, uh, I'm gonna pick whichever one looks like he cares less. They're, they're both very fanatical. They seem like their job is to... All right, fine, I picked the one that's shorter. All right, go for him. Okay. Oh, no, that was not good. I rolled a two, and I ah, have yes. an add six, so that's an eight. Yes, you will miss him. I just wanted to make sure you didn't roll a one. No, I did not. Oh, but I get two attacks, right? You do, so you can take another I'll swing. Try again. Or say, I'll say you're attacking number six. Sure, and I that time I rolled an eight, so with a six, that's 14? You whiff just barely. He puts the spear up to deflect the blow. Okay. And I'm like, ah! But I guess that's my turn. All right. So, Jill Tour. Um. So I'm gonna look for my initial target, and I don't see her, right? Right. She has seemed to poof. If I move up, can I try to spot her? Um. How far are you moving up? I can bonus dash to make it 50. All right. So is that what your plan is? Yes, I want to stay in the foil in the uh, in the in the trees and whatever the hell is here. Trees, trees. You, there's trees and muck and mire, but the thing is, you'd have to be going around the outside of the hill to do that. So, can I not? Can I not be? Able you can make a perception check. I'm just letting you know that you're not because you're doing the circumference of a wider area. You're not getting as much of a different view. So you're seeing a little bit more of one side. Just right. letting you know what you're seeing because right, you're see. far away. All right, then I'll just move in to try because I do want to spot her, take her out already. No, no, right. no, 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 not gonna let that get away. Um, so yeah, I'll actually to tell the 50 feet and try to spot her. All right, make a perception check. Uh, no. All right, seven. you don't see her. I got a seven. Do not see her. Uh, but uh, you do still have your action if you'd like uh, to use it. I am currently out in the open. I'm taking a dodge action. Alrighty. I am no fool. <laughs> Alright, that's going to bring us to Scratch. Now, Scratch, what you're noticing on your turn, because you're at the top of the hill, the woman yeah. who you cut down, uh, she's kind of twisting her wrists a little bit against the ropes. You realize she's not trying to unbind herself that way. She seems to be trying to get the blood flowing into her hands a little bit so they, she can move them. And she's pulling the rope forward to try and pull your dart out of it. Because you see your dart still kind of sticking in one of the threads. So she's trying to get that to try and cut herself free. That's what she's doing with her turn. Just letting you know what's going on there. That's fine. Carry you on. do, however, have a guy on you. Craig has four guys on him. And there is another guy coming up the uh, the hill, and well, where did she go? That's the next thing I was gonna say. You don't see her, but go ahead and make a quick survival check. At advantage. At advantage, because she is your marked target. Natural twenty. The wind picks up, and you catch her scent, which is amazing that you got it. Ding. But there was just something more like dried herbs mixed with this wet dog kind of oh. smell. Yeah. And you know that she has gone off. She's moved into the village to your right. So she went down the opposite side of the hill that you guys. Is she can't. She can't have moved more than 30 feet, right? She, she could. She could also use her movement. Action. Yeah, she bonus actioned Misty Step. Misty Step. Yeah. So I'm going to. The guy who attacked me, I'm going to punch him. Alrighty. 22 to hit. That'll hit him. Eight points of damage. All right. And my second attack, 19 to hit. That'll hit. 
four points of damage. Alrighty. Punch, punch. Phew. So you punch, punch. And then you disengage. And I'm going to use a key point to disengage, and I'm going to chase after her. Alright, so you disengage, you run past him, You and this, like, this other one has just like crested the hill, and you run right past him, he's like, fucking come on! Like, that expression on his face, I just got here! And you you run down the hill, and as you look, you, you see that she clearly went into one of the huts. You can see her tracks clearly. They just appear in the middle of nowhere. They can't be anyone else's. So, you know where she is. You know where she is. And that will bring us to Craig. Craig, you are in what many of us like to call a target-rich environment. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. All right, um, so, uh, which one looks the most damage out of the, all the ones around me? Abbott. Hey, Abbott! I hate that guy. <laughs> <laughs> 18. Uh, that will hit Abbott. Oh, 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 Max. It's magic, you know? Uh, so that's a, let's see, that's 19 points of damage. Damn. Yeah. All right, so that's the first one. Yep. Abbott, you know, stops laughing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, so do 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 swing again. But Junior's like, whoa, your uh, little dog. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that's going to be a 16. That'll hit Abbott as well, if that's what you're still going for. 13 points of damage. Just enough. So basically, the first swing, you bury the blade into the side of him, knock him to the ground, pick the blade up, and just sever him in half. Long, like, Whoa! cutting his belly just open, just... So now you have heads and tails of the hyena. But as you do, the blood and ichor spray up and it turns to mist, green mist, and just dissipates. Whoa. Petunia's <laughs> really impressed with it. Yeah, and I'm going for my bonus action attack because I'm frenzy. All right. Against? Eh. Costello. All right, so you turn on Costello. Uh, that's an 18 on the die, so I'm not even going to bother. That'll hit him. Yeah. With an armor class of 12, they're really not hard to hit. 15 points of damage. 15 points of damage. Yep. Alright, that's going to bring us to Piper. You have, uh, have a, you have a buddy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to attack him with my rapier. I got an 8 total to hit, thank you. You miss him handily. Well, Costello has choices, and Craig, you're the main choice here, because let's be honest, you just killed Abbott. Hmm, yeah. And you, you beat on his master, so uh, that is a non-natural 20 to hit you? Uh, that hits. So 20 points of piercing damage, halved to 10. Yep. Okay, ouch. Not good that I went into this fight already hurt, so. But yeah, he just, he bites into your arm and just starts doing that terrier shake. <laughs> he kind of, I'm so short, he kind of lifts me a little and I'm raging, so I don't technically feel anything. And it's just like, we're kind of looking at each other's eyes, just I'm foaming at the mouth, he's foaming at the mouth, we're both foaming at the mouth, it's just a whole mess. Oh yeah, and his fangs are about as long as your fingers, so those things have gone in. This is gonna hurt later. <laughs> oh, this is gonna, you're gonna wake up in pain. And uh, the two gnolls that are up there are going to stab at V with the spears as well. They're kind of ignoring your puppers uh, because Craig is more terrifying. That's fair. They're gonna regret that though. That's gonna miss because that's only an 11. And the other one, ah, no, in the tray. Uh, it's a shame because out of the tray it was a crit. In the tray it was an eight plus number, so that's not gonna hit either. But I only count it in the tray because I have standards. <sighs> but the gnolls suck. God damn it, gnolls. The one on Piper and one of the ones on Petunia gets to go. I forgot there's also other gnolls. So the one against Piper, that is a 17 plus numbers. Hits. 
It's only 1d8 this time. So that is four points of piercing damage. Okay. As he stab at V. And one at Petunia. There's an 18 plus number, cool. so he's going to hit you too. Yes, he will. And that's going to be eight points of piercing damage. Okay. All right, so that was group two. The Death Mage gets to do something. So, Scratch, you're standing there looking at that door like, I know you're in there somewhere. And then, phoom, blackness. And then she's going to do things that you can't see. Huh. And then it's going to be the direwolf's turn. Oh, good. Fang is just going to growl at at Furia like him, like motions to, and he goes and bites uh, Costello. Or we'll try to. Come on, please. Uh, that is a 14 to hit. That will hit. It's like, this is what we do, not each other. 11 points of damage. 11 points of damage to Costello. And then Fury. Good boy. Good boy. That is a 19 to hit. That will hit. Oh, right. This is this is <laughs> another 11 points. We, we hit the thing that tastes bad. Right. Right. <laughs> Got it. And uh, then group one is going to go. Group one has the guy who, like, Scratch walked past the guy Scratch attacked <laughs> and the guy on Petunia. Scratch is currently in darkness. I have a question about darkness. Yes. Um, so I'm at the top of the hill, yes? Yes. So I can see down to the village area. Mm -hmm. Do I just see like suddenly there's like a ball that's like dark? Yep. But I saw Scratch go that way, right? Yep. I'm in darkness? Yeah. I'm 30 I'm at least 35 feet away from her. Really? Really? Your speed? Yeah. Oh, then I guess you're not in the darkness. You just see the darkness. Okay. I thought you were closer than you were. I apologize. So she cast the darkness around herself or around Scratch? Around herself. Around So now, the hut she went so into. now I'm looking down. I see Scratch who's not in darkness. Right. I and a ball of and darkness. A ball of darkness. Right. So I know where she is. Vaguely, you know the twenty-foot radius that she she's in a point around twenty-foot radius. Right. She's in that area. She's in that hut. I'm like, she's in there, duh. Yeah. Well, since they can see you, Scratch, your two buddies are gonna come for you, because yeah. And what's their movement speed? Uh, the one is close enough to hit you. The other one's close enough to shoot you. So the first one's going to shoot at the the one you just punched in the face a couple times. Out of the tray. Stay in the tray, please. That is a 19 on the die. That'll hit. Yep. I see where it's going already, so I know what's going to end up happening, but... It's two points of piercing damage. Just... I just casually catch it behind me. <laughs> You're just like, ah, catch. And then the spear comes in with a 17 to hit. So, that hits... All right, so that is three plus two, so five points of piercing. As you're like, you catch the eye, you're like, come on, stab! God damn, why do they keep stabbing me? They keep aiming for the same spot, too. And now I'm at 18 hit points, so I don't want to run in there anymore. <laughs> I have changed my mind. And the one on Petunia rolled a 17 on the die with his spear. Ooh, yeah, that'll hit too. For seven points of piercing damage. And that is group one. So that's going to bring us back to the top with Petunia. Okay. So let me see here. So I've got a guy attacking me who I didn't hit. Two guys attacking you that have not been hit yet. Well, I might as well try again. All right. Try, try again. If at first you don't succeed. No, I don't think so. Well... But 12 will miss. Yeah. Oh, and second attack. Second attack. Oh, second attack hits. I rolled a 17. Yeah, that'll hit. Okay, cool. They only have a 15. That'll hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on a second. 
Oh, I always roll 2d6 for my greatsword. Always roll 2d6 for the greatsword, and you can reroll ones and twos, yes. but only once on each. Well, good, because I had to. 13 points of damage. Nice. All right, he makes a con save. He passes. He doesn't pass out as you take more than half his hit points in a single swing. Boom, baby. Woof. All right, so that was Petunia's turn. Jeltor, you are up. All right, well, I just saw a big old boy of darkness show up, so I know that's... Well, it's on the other side of the hill. Make a perception check, see if you can... Because you're only 10 feet up the hill. Even moving up... Oh, yeah, because I didn't know I was 80 feet back. 10. 10? You saw Scratch go that way. You don't know why he went that way, but you saw Scratch go to the other side of the hill. You also see Piper being menaced by a knoll. You see two knolls on Petunia. You see two knolls and a hyena on Craig and the Direwolves. I am going to shoot at the one on Piper. All right. You do not have advantage on this one, but you will get sneak attack. Yep. Uh, 19. I'm going to die. 19 on the die will hit. 16 points of damage. 16. Wow. Um, makes a count save. He passes. He manages to pass. But the arrow just kind of catches him in the chest out of nowhere, Piper. You're like, holy shit. And I know deep in my heart that that was Jothor. The dragon slayer. It, it is a smaller arrow, so it's got to be him. And I'm going to... Con- you to move in the direction that Scratch moved. Alright, I'm guessing you're kind of swinging wide to avoid the giant pile of fur <laughs> and fang and blade I mean, that is where Craig is. I'll fly at that point. Ooh, smart. So as you fly up overhead, you do see the giant glo- globe of darkness. Alright, so that's Jail Tour. You, you shoot the one on, uh, on Piper and you fly up into the air. All heroic like. <laughs> so I have a bonus action, but I can't. Oh, I mean, I can bonus dash. You can bonus action move. I'll uh, bonus dash. All right, so you fly up over where the darkness is. So you, you actually probably beat Scratch there at this point, as you see Scratch has a guy on him and the other guy like shot an arrow that Scratch has in his hand currently. Huh. But that will be Jail Tour's turn and a good segue into Scratch's turn. Well, I've got this guy in front of me now. Yes, you do. And I see Jeltor, the great dragon slayer, off to destroy the mage. So I'm going to... I am going to punch him. All right. You're going to punch this guy. This is the fresh guy. 18 to hit. That'll hit. Seven points of damage. All right. Uh, second attack. All right. 22 to hit. That will definitely hit. Five points of damage. Five points of damage. And this time I'm going to go for the bonus and my unarmed strike. All right. Bonus attack. 13 to hit. That will miss. Okay. All righty. So you just pop, pop, and he's able to, like, duck out of the way of the last one. Mm -hmm. That will bring us to Craig who is still in his target-rich environment. Yes, yeah, so I'm going for Casteno again, just because he's already been hit, and uh, I'm going to try to take him out. For a nice right. dinner, maybe a long walk after. Uh, not where he's going. Let's go see a movie. Welcome not where he's scratches. about to go. Belly scratches. what I mean. Mm. Yep, Craig's going to get all the belly scratches. All the scratches. Uh, that's a 15. That'll hit. 14 points of damage. And you, like, from under the chin, just take his head clean off. And as you see the head flying from the body just turns into a swirl of mist, and the body and the head dissipate. All right. So that was my second attack, right? That was your first attack. Okay, that's what I'm sorry. There are a pair of gnolls still standing there who have now, they've lost their, uh, their hyena friends. Yep. So, um, as he kind of does that, he's foaming at the mouth, he turns around, wide-eyed, and then he goes for uh, one of uh, the gnolls, or whatever these things are. 
15. 15 will hit. 13 points of damage to whatever one. It doesn't matter because neither one of them. I'll say number seven. Why not? And then I'm bonus action swing. All right. Are you swinging at the same guy? Yeah. Yeah. All right. 18. That'll hit. Cool. Alrighty, and damage. Yeah, not as good, but uh, 12 points. Alright. See, he was already fading to black. He failed the con save. He was going to just pass out. The last thing he saw as blackness took him was the blade come down and cleave his head in half. Fair. You ever see Watchmen when he takes the cleaver to the dog's face? It's basically what just happened. Uh, Alright, and Craig's kind of just, now that he's attached to the Great Axe, he's kind of trying to shake him off, but he's just not coming off, and then he just kicks him off. (laughs) And now there's a Knoll. Alright, so that was Craig. Piper, you still have your friend on you, but he has taken some damage. And I will try to end his suffering a bit. No, 11. That'll miss. Also, is there a reason you haven't been using misdirection when people hit you? I realized that after. I'm just like, I forgot. <laughs> okay. So Piper swings with her rapier and still cannot connect with this guy. I was probably like focused on what was going on like with my, my dire wolves and like what was going on over there that the guy in front of me just wasn't that big of a threat. And then he hit me. I'm like... Oh! Then he was a threat. Then he was a threat. Alright, so the fiendish hyenas are now off the list. Group 2 is going to go, and that's the one on Piper, the one on Craig, and there's one still on Petunia from that group. So, Piper, that's a natural 2 to hit you. Yeah. Petunia is a 16 on the die, so he'll hit you. Okay. For 7 points of piercing. And then the one on Craig has a 14 to hit you. Miss. Yeah, he's not hes not doing well. He's terrified of what's going on here. Oh, yeah, no. The mage will do a thing. The dire wolves get to go. Right. So there's one null right there. Right? There's one null there, yeah. Right, so bang. Oh, my baby. That is a 15 to hit. That will hit. They do it. They do so much better than I do. That's ten points of damage. Bang. All right. And Fury is also a fifteen to hit. That'll hit. Good boys. Another ten points. All right. He's looking bad, but he's still standing. And Group One will go. Group One is both of the ones that are on scratch. And one, the wounded one on Petunia. So first, the one that shot at Scratch is going to look up and see a flying halfling. So the arrow didn't do any good against the cat. Might as well try to shoot the halfling. That is ten. He misses. Yeah, so you see an arrow flip past you. The one with the spear is going to go for Scratch. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> Natural one. And then a five. Uh, so he goes for you, Scratch, and kind of trips over himself there. Does he survive? Um, so he goes, you just kind of sidestep, and the he like lunged it forward. The tip goes into the swamp, like the, sw- the ground underneath him, and he keeps going into it and just impales himself in his own spear and kills himself. What? <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah. So Scratch's problems solved themselves. They're doing the work for us. So that's that's Group One's turn, and that's gonna bring us back to the top with Petunia. Hell yeah! All right. Wait. So did you say I I I still have two on me though? Yep. One is wounded. That's the yeah, one you yeah, hit. Yeah. Let's hit that hard. guy. Let's hit that guy again. All right. Mm, nope. That's not gonna hit. But let's try attack two. Roll to 16. That one will hit. That one will hit, yes. Oh, I get to re-roll that. Alright, nine. Just enough. 
You drop him. Boom, baby. You swing and you whiff, and then you bring it down right on the clavicle, and you your blade kind of sinks about six inches Ooh. down his chest. Oh, that feels good. All right, cool. Uh, so, Jeltor, you are up. You just got shot by a guy. There's a guy that just killed himself. And then there's a globe of darkness. Okay, so I'm going to shoot the guy that shot at me. All right. He's next to scratch. Roll to hit. He's not next to scratch. He was actually about, like, mm. it's like ten feet away. Hmm. There's no sneak attack in there. I mean, you're in the air. You can see the one on Petunia. You can see the one on Piper. Oh, the one on Piper's still alive? The, the one on Piper's still alive. The one on Petunia is completely untouched. And there's one still by Craig, but he's being menaced by Craig and two direwolves, so... The thing is, it's Craig. It's C Craig I'm not really worried about. But Petunia seems to be able to handle herself as far as I've noticed. Mm-hmm. Piper has gone down several times, so... <laughs> Gonna help out Piper. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty. 21. That'll hit. Uh, 17. I mean, 14. Whew, 14. 14? And either or, didn't matter. That thing had six hit points left, so you pop that one in the head, and it just falls at Piper's feet, and you see the flying halfling as he is lowering his hand from his released arrow pose... Hair billowing in the wind. I, I bring my hood is still up, and... you fuck. Shut up. <laughs> Cloak billowing in the wind. That's more dramatic. <laughs> I bring my hand to my mouth and just blow him a kiss like, thank you. <laughs> Ignore and fly into the, fly into the darkness. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you just plunge into the blackness. The hero, after saving you, plunges into dire peril, which you can't really see because you're not on the hill, but... Yeah. <laughs> Scratch will tell you all about it. In grave detail. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so that's Jill Tur's turn. Scratch, you are up. You have that one guy with the arrow behind you, but other than that... I, I look at him, I just, like, I shrug, and I go inside. All right, so you step into the darkness. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> I've come to fight in you again. <laughs> Uh, can I make a check to see if I can, like, I still have Hunter's Mark on her, so I should. You do. You should be able to smell her, too. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. you can try to sniff her out. So go ahead and make a survival check. You still have the advantage. I'm just oh. setting the DC higher just because of how you're tracking her. I don't, I don't think it's going to matter. Um, 22. 22. You smell her. Because what you can tell is you... The, the wet dog smell mixed with the herbs. She's in here. She's in, she's nearby. The thing is, you're not in the hut. You, like, find your way to the hut, and that scent of herbs is getting stronger. I mean, can I go in the hut? You may. Um, though I'm expecting her to attack me when I go into the hut. Though right. she should also not, she also should not be able to see me. She cannot see you, no. Wait, what is this hut made of? Mud and dirt, uh, mud and branches, rather. The branches are lashed together, and any gaps that were in there was packed with mud and moss. Okay. Yeah, we can't burn this down. I was gonna say, do you have a lighter? It's basically wet wood and mud. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> I also can't just punch through the wall and go in. <laughs> oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! <laughs> I'm guessing I'm not going to Kool-Aid man this. Yeah, probably not going to Kool-Aid man this. I've got 18 hit points. Yeah. I'll probably go down if I get hit. Wait, I can cast Cure Wounds. Yeah, dude, you forget. Yeah. Did you forget you're our healer? Yeah, I forgot <laughs> I was a healer. So yeah, I'm going to go up to the, to the hut and I'm going to pull out the stone and cast Cure Wounds. All right. How do I cast Cure Wounds? <laughs> Uh, it's 1d8 plus your spellcasting modifier. Okay, I have healed. Slightly. Alright. So... That will bring us to Craig. Hmm. Alright, so I'm going to uh, swing at the only one left. Alright, well there's technically another one within your movement after this one falls, just so you're aware. Okay, cool. It's the one on me, right? Uh, actually, there's two within your movement, okay. depending on which direction you go. 
Uh, 11. Misses. No, I f- figured. Damn it. <laughs> you swing at him and he squeals and ducks under the blade. Yeah, yeah. All right. Swing. Okay. Th- that's a 13 on the die, so... That'll hit, because I know you have at least more than plus two as a plus. Yeah. So that's going to be... 11 points of damage. It's going to be enough. He's, a, he's at two hit points. I, I, yeah, I figured he was dead. I just wanted to double check. <laughs> he ducks, and you just bring it down, and like the blade buries itself in his back, sending him face down into the ground, dead. All right, so I'm going to move however far I need to move for the next one, and then... Uh, all right, so that's a, tw- that's a 12 on the die, so... That will probably hit, because I think you have more than plus three. Yeah. And that's going to... 11 points of damage to him. 11 points of damage to him. And he just drops because he failed his con save. Oh, nice. And uh, as you're looking at Craig, you see the foam at the mouth, but he's smiling in his rage. Like, there's no... Oh, that's even scarier. Yeah, like, <laughs> I, I always forget to describe what his rage looked like, but literally you see the purple mocha and everything. It's just like this tiny little thing foaming at the mouth. And he's just, he's smiling. Holy shit. With his eyes as wide as humanly possible. Our puppy is really terrifying. Or gnomishly possible. He's got... Gnomes have bigger eyes than humans do, Whoa. like, proportionally. So there, that's even wider. Yep. Yikes. Yep. Okay. All right, so that was Craig. Piper, you're up. So there is the one who shot at Jeltor left, right? Yes. All right. Not that it has worked so far, but I'll go try to attack him. All right, so you run up and attack him. 18 to hit. That'll hit. Three damage. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! I stab at thee. I rolled a one. <laughs> you stab at thee, and you kind of like pierce his bicep. He just kind of looks at you like, really? Is this really your choice? <laughs> I just kind of look at him, just like, uh, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a close range just, just like, fighter. Just like that shrug of apparently. Group two has nothing to do because they're dead or unconscious. There's only one that's unconscious. The mage does her thing. The dire wolves get to go. Um, what? How? How far away from? Uh, how far away are the wolves from the the hut with the darkness, or from where I am? They're like probably fifteen feet away from you. Okay. They're gonna come get this one. Bang! They come bounding around the campfire. Yeah. Bounding around the bonfire and just tear into him. 24 to hit. That'll hit. Eight points of damage from Fang. Dead. Just dead. Like the wolves come in and just tear him apart. It's like, ah, maybe I should have done this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And like Fury's just kind of like looking towards where the darkness is now that, you know, Fang just dropped... Very uh, true. Yeah. Can can uh, Fury go over to Scratch? Fury cannot see Scratch. So Fury will have to make a perception check. Sure. They have hearing and smell. Right. So he has advantage on sniffing him out. Come on, baby. Go find... Uh, that's a thir- uh, 12. All right, so it takes him the rest of his turn to find Scratch, but Scratch, you feel a cold nose press up against you. In the darkness? In the darkness. You feel a giant canine face press against you. (laughs) Oh. And just kind of, like, lick the paw that um, he found, just like, I'm friend. It's like, please be the wolf and not a hyena. Please be the wolf and not a hyena. (laughs) That is going to bring us to group one, which is now completely dead. You're welcome. And Petunia, you have an unconscious knoll at your feet, so you can make the decision to coup de gras him or go after. Um, I kind of want to go and free the rest of those peoples. Good call. All right. So you head up and you start. The woman who was cut down by Scratch is currently using the dart to try and saw through the ropes at her feet. Yeah. She's not doing a great job of it, 
She's like halfway through all things considered. It's a point. Yeah, yeah. It's... You get the feeling the dart probably cut the top rope more because of the force than of the blade. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, I'm going to go and I'm going to um, help and I'm going to cut her free like choo-choo real quick. Can I do that to more than one of them? In this I'll turn. say if you're careful, I'll let you free her and cut down one person, but they won't be free of their bonds. They'll just be down. That's okay. I want to I want to start working on it because I don't know what the mage is up to in there. Like if I had gone in there just out of curiosity, is this darkness that would be as dim light to me because I have no, no it's this magic. is magical. Okay, darkness. Yeah. So I'm like, I, I'm not even going to bother going in there because I'm not useful in the dark. So yeah, I'm gonna say I'm gonna be cutting down the prisoners. Gotcha, gotcha. And I assume you take your dagger out to do that you're not doing it with a great sword. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm gonna be nice and gentle about it because like I said, there's only, there's the one guy who's like on the floor who is not a threat at this point in time. Either Craig will finish him or I'm not worried about him getting up right away. So. Alrighty. If he's down, Craig is going nowhere near him because he doesn't he doesn't see the threat technically, so Alright, yeah, that's fair. Alright. So now Jeltor, you're up. I want to try to listen for the no mage. Alright. So make a perception check. You're listening, so it's not a disadvantage, but it is a higher DC. Twenty modified. Twenty modified? Uh you can hear if you fly down lower, you can hear her breathing. She is in there. You don't know... You can't see the door. You, there's no windows, really, to these things. But on the other side of the wooden wall, you know that she's there. Clanking around. Not clanking so much. Uh, you hear, like, ragged breathing. I go in? You have to find the door. So you would, like, put your hand on the side of it, float around till you find the door. Yeah. And then you can slip in if you like. And you touch a dog butt and a cat butt. Actually, heads or tails, JJ? Heads. All right, so you go around the way that isn't that you, you know, brush your butt against the top of Scratch's head. Gotcha. Uh, so I, I go I go in. <laughs> so you, you slip inside. Do I still hear her breathing? Yeah, you still hear her breathing. Uh, shoot in that direction. All right, you have disadvantage. That worked for me. Fifteen. Fifteen. You hear a yelp as you do make contact. Ah. And then you hear glass break. So first, roll your damage. Haha. -ha. Seven. Glad you took that health potion. All right. Uh, now I need... It's it's Fury who's down there? Yeah. Fury, Scratch, and Jeltor all need to make constitution saving throws. Okay. Yeah, fuzz over the calm, boy. Yeah. I nah, that's a six. Fourteen. That didn't roll bad. Twelve. All right. So, Jeltor, the glass breaks at your, like, below you, at where your feet is, are. So she's below me? Beneath your feet. It, the glass breaks beneath your feet. So she and a cloud. You don't see the cloud, but you can tell based on the hiss and the scent that fills your nostrils. You manage to shake the effect. You're, you're feeling a little dizzy and you start coughing. And you hear Fury and Scratch start coughing. But Fury and Scratch did not pass their saves. Hey, Brian. Hey, Matt. I'm not breathing. Water breathing. You have water breathing, I thought. No, I do not need to breathe. What? Hmm? I thought the item was a ring of water breathing. It's a ring of just eternal breath? It, yeah. You said Are you just the never of the breathing? Ring? Yes. Oh, yeah. Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I, rec I, vaguely re I vaguely recall I'm mentioning he's not breathing. No, it's it's also in my notes. <laughs> All right, so there you go. You you weren't breathing. Hoisted by my own magical items that I give you people every time, <laughs> every time. That's why it was wisdom based, but it doesn't matter. Does not matter. 
I only got the fucking wolf. So, other than coughing, what happened to... We'll find out on your turn. Okay. Or his turn, rather. Oh my god. Um, Man fucking-tastic. That was Jill Twist's turn. Scratch, your turn. Okay. I'm gonna go in. Alright, make a deck save. Deck save? Broken glass. Mm -hmm. So you don't trip on shit on the floor. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm flying above things. Mm-hmm. 16. 16. Uh, your foot falls and you feel metal and you pull it back as a bear trap snaps shut. Whoa! She put a bear. She set a bear trap up. What a bitch! <laughs> what, a <laughs> bear trap. what a bitch! <laughs> oh my god! What do you think the original trigger was oh supposed to be? Oh my god! The original trigger was a bear trap going off. Oh, so because I'm fly ah, because I'm flying, it didn't go off. So You're flying, it off. didn't go off, which is why she was so like she yelped when that fucking happened. Because <laughs> like, how the fuck did that happen? Oh, that's great. Ah, uh, hmm. Note, never go indoors. Fucking flying <laughs> is goddamn stupid, man. <laughs> That's why Adventures League doesn't allow level one Aarakocra. I'm hoping there's only one, so I'm going to go over there. Right, I, I know where she is, though. Uh, you have advantage on finding her. You oh, and did she, did she make a save? Versus... Concentration save. Oh, yeah, because I shot her there with was the no arrow. There was no spell. Darkness. Oh, the, the darkness. Yeah. Yeah. It's not high. She only has to hit a 10. Yes. Fuck, darkness goes down. Woo! God damn it. <laughs> so I'm going to go in and I will attack her. All right. What, what, is it, what is she doing? She's currently nursing an arrow wound. She was She's standing by uh, the back wall, and you see that part of the mud in the back wall has been dug out. Oh, she was trying to get out. Well, it's only enough for her to look through, but Missy Step, you only need to see. Ah. Uh... And she has she, darkness. Her turn was going to be dropping the darkness, looking through, misty stepping, and then running. Mm. She was leading you into a trap. Get which it. Which is why I was flying above so I could see her try to run out. Get her. So I got a two. So, oh, no. so eight to hit. That'll miss. So she like ducks out of the way of that punch. Second attack. You rattle the mud roof. Fourteen. That will also miss. I'm going to use a uh, flurry of blows. All right. Or wait, flurry of blows. All righty. And I'm going to make my first attack. 21 to hit. That will hit her. And I'm going to use another key point for stunning strike. Roll your damage first. Oh, I see. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, and I still have Hunter's Mark on. Mm-hmm. Six points of damage. She dead. Nice. <laughs> Four. This has been the Reliably Chaotic Podcast. Champions of Solane is an original Dungeons & Dragons adventure written by Brian Scharf using the Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition rule set published by Wizards of the Coast. My name is Brian Sharp, and I've been your DM. You can reach me at ReliableDM on Twitter. My name is Nicole Summers, and I play Piper. And this is Jair, also known as JJ, and I play the character of John Jactus. This is Matthew Reed, and I play Scratch. This is Andrew Brown, and I play Craig. Hey, it's me, it's Sarah, and I played Petunia. Theme music by Adrian Von Ziegler. All other music by Kevin McLeod on the Incompetech website and Adrian Von Ziegler. Detailed information about music in this episode is provided in its description. Music for this episode was selected by Nicole Summers. The episode was edited by Matthew Reed with assistance from Sarah. Contact us on Twitter at ReliablyChaotic, email us at ReliablyChaotic at gmail.com, or join our Discord server by following the link in our description. If you like our show and would like to support us, please consider becoming a patron by going to patreon.com slash reliablychaotic or by leaving a five-star rating and review on iTunes. It really does help a lot. Thank you for listening, and we hope to see you again in our next adventure.